Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Brenda Farkas, co-pastor at Living Hope Fellowship. I'm Matthew J. Farkas. I'm the pastor of Living Hope Fellowship. The question is, if the Bible is God speaking to us, how do we apply it today? We're here to show that the Bible is still relevant today. The name of the show is Say What? Say What? Hello and welcome to Say What with Pastor Matthew and Brenda Farkas. Uh, I, I titled today, Possible or Impossible, because we talked a little bit about with God, nothing shall be impossible. And I think that's in Luke one thirty-seven. But my thought of that before we go is that we live in a world that's always changing. Mm -hmm. And the realities that we face in life cause our thinking to change sometimes. And um, there's a verse that we sometimes look at. It says, have the mind of Christ. So in talking about faith, you said mm -hmm. to me, or said to us, that it's important what we speak right. and what we talk about. So people build their lives by their words, and they create realities in their life. And we recently, in the last year and a half or two, have dealt a lot with realities of fear and a lot of things that, that were um, changed. In, mm -hmm. in everybody's conversations and, and everybody's thinking in regards to the pandemic and things. And so can I think like God? How does God think? Because it says, have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. What is that? And does that affect my faith? Because if it's true that your faith can be affected by speaking, mm -hmm. then I have a part to play in changing realities in my life. And I always thought it was like, talk like God, act like God, you know, because you've got him on the inside of you. Right. So I just wanted to ask you that, and, and it's still talking about faith. And the, the verse that I was looking at was, it was obviously Luke 1, 37. It says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. I don't know what it's like in the Greek, but in the King James, when I read it, it says, for with God. To me, that means, okay, God has to be in it in mm. order for it not to be impossible. But it's kind of odd because it says, nothing shall be impossible. So when I used to read it to myself, I would say, no thing will be impossible. Yeah. But when, go ahead. No, go ahead. But and last thing I want to say is in Matthew um, nineteen twenty six, Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So it's just a different way that the wording is. Yeah. And I think sometimes in our lives, we make mountains out of molehills because we make it feel like everything's just impossible. Mm -hmm. When there's a lot of possibilities around the corner, we just have to line up with it. Right. So does God ever change his thinking, his mind, his mm -hmm. speaking? It's amazing in the Greek. Um, what, it all ties in if you study the whole council. It used to be called progressive revelation, but that's a bad word today in the Christian church. We don't want to be progressive. So they named it biblical theology, and they changed it. Um, Meaning it's, a, so it, is it? No, a, in other words, God, you have to study Genesis of Revelation and keep in context okay. everything the Old Testament and the fulfillment of the Old Testament through the New Testament makes sure you'll see that God doesn't change. He's so always the same. So it's not <laughs> the concept that God evolves. It's no. truth evolves. It's a yeah. No, everything's finished. Nothing shall yeah. be added or take away. Yeah. So your concept or what we're over in Hebrew says not to be slot for, to be lazy. Mm -hmm. And that word lazy there is a non-study of the word. It's amazing to me how many Christians I've ran into this area that's never even read the Bible. Um, you can't argue out something if you don't know what it says. So that tells me they're only arguing out thoughts they heard someone else say, or they're, or they're arguing out what their church taught them, or religion taught them. Some, someone put a seed into them, that thought, which they turned around and patterned after, and then spoke it as the truth. 
So God gave us his word so that we could always examine and scrutinize and know his divine will. And that's why you just can't take one verse out of context and say, well, that's what God. For example, I had a friend that just recently passed of cancer, and we went to church. We got filled with the Spirit together, and we went to church the following Sunday, and the service was stopped in the middle of the service, and they come back, and they took us out, and they said, don't ever come back here. You're not welcome. And we were both born again and filled with the Spirit, speaking in tongues, and the reason we were not welcome there wasn't speaking in tongues. It's because he had a long hair and an earring. And, I mean, that's how conservative the area we grew up in, the hillbilly, redneck, whatever you want to call it, area, very conservative. And so he never went back to church, and his life was ruined. I mean, that's one scripture. You can't find anywhere. Because if you go to the Old Testament, Samson was told never to cut his hair. Um, uh, um, the guy... I'm trying to think of the other Nazarites. But so, a Nazarite vow... Was it John the Baptist one? Yeah, well, yeah mm -hmm. John the Baptist one. Mm -hmm. the, the Nazarite vow was you didn't cut, you didn't put a razor mm -hmm. to your head. And that was actually, long hair was actually a sign of godliness to the Old Testament because it was a vow you made unto God to separate to him. Mm -hmm. And so in the New Testament, we come to the Corinthians, it says it's, it's a shame against nature for man to have long hair. Well, you can't find that anywhere else. And the reason that was, it was against their culture, so they were just basically talking to their cultures. You have to divide sometimes and study the Word of God and divide what's culture and what God spoke. Yeah, it's all inspired by God, but you have to understand. In other words, that's where we also got women wear hats mm -hmm. because in the same culture, they were very sexual. And the prostitutes, when they got caught, were shaving all their heads. And so they would come into the church because of the message of salvation, the message of repentance. When they would come in, then everybody would snicker and look, say, there's the, there's the whore. And so Paul said, all women wear hats. And so the reason was is so no one would look around the room and know what you came out of. And so there you go. That was another culture thing. And so all women don't have to wear hats. It says, the Bible says their long hair or their hair is the glory of the man, and et cetera, et cetera. So we take these scriptures, and you can't just take one and say, well, this is gospel. Biblical theology or progressive revelation was you took that scripture and say, well, let me study the other scriptures that talk about long hair. And when you do that, you find a Nazarite vow. And the right vow was actually a good thing. How'd you get there from the mind of Christ? Anyway, because <laughs> how I got there was mm -hmm. this. You have to keep in context of even what this verse says to okay. understand. Well, faith. I noticed, I noticed when I went to the first one, it was about Mary's response to the angel and to God. Right. But when I went to the next one in Matthew, it was about Jesus talking about a rich person and, and, entering and, and, and into those two say so, something different in the yeah, Greek. Yeah, yeah, okay. This okay. one here in Luke 1 37. Mm -hmm. Hati uk anaduna tese. That's actually all things, or actually that all things are impossible. All right, mm -hmm. except the word, all words, all words spoken from God. So, so therefore, only so God's word God, is possible. If, yeah, if God spoke it, then it's mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. Because Mary, because we read the next verse. Mm -hmm. What's the next verse says? Mary says, let your word be. Mm -hmm. So what he was saying to her, Mary says, how can I have a child? Mm -hmm. I'm a virgin. I've ha never had sex with a man. Right. How can I conceive a child? God said, for all things that I speak, every, all words that I speak out of my mouth hmm, is possible. Mm -hmm. And so I twitched it there because it's it's, they're not impossible. But I just said, all things are possible if God speaks it. So the very next verse confirms that. So Mary said, let your word be. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God spoke it. That's how she was going to get pregnant. The word of God, verse John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Verse 14, it became mm -hmm. flesh. So if you look at that, the word mm -hmm. that he spoke yep. went into her womb. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit came upon her. This is Luke 1, 31, 35 and conceived that seed into her womb. And I tell people all the time, it's the exact same way we get born again. When you say, Jesus Christ, come into my heart, the Holy Ghost comes upon you, 
The Word of God goes into you. The Spirit of God follows it, takes out of you that nature of separation, that separation mm -hmm. from God, which consists of the nature of sin. He takes that out, replaces it with a seed of God, 1 John 3, 9, Titus 3, 5, I mean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what happens is you're born of the Spirit. It's the same process. His so, was in the womb of Mary. Ours is in the womb of the Spirit. Jesus did not have to be born from above. He came from above. Mm -hmm. He came out of the bosom of the Father. He was spoke into the womb of Mary. And by the power of God, he was formed or conceived in the womb of Mary. Just say, we're conceived in our spirit by the power of God. So, so I get that. That's your... To now, birth, spiritual now, birth, and yeah. Right. Now, but, but, I, but. I want to follow this now, how you get a renewed mind. Okay, well, that's what I was going to say. Right. Because what I was going to say is, so, when I look at God's Word, and I examine it, and then it becomes something in my spirit then, that I say, I agree with God, that, mm -hmm. and I'm going to speak that. I'm going to create that reality in my life, because God said it. Right. And he promised that to me right. so I can have it. Right. Then that is the same concept right. as being what you just said. Because I was just yeah. watching a show the other day, and they were talking about religion being a, uh, a fantasy, an illusion. Mm -hmm. um, right. And it's interesting because if you don't know the Word of God, it almost sounded logical. Mm -hmm. There but you he go, said, logical. Huh? <laughs> it sounded logical. It sounded reasonable right. because that is where we live right because it yeah. said um in the beginning of the show it says we were born into the natural mm -hmm. then we chose yeah. to be religious no you didn't i wanted this as i ran mm -hmm. for years from god because mm -hmm. i wanted nothing to do with this when i finally settled down through prayer someone praying for me and prison and almost losing my life and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera all these dark spots I got in, God could speak to me. He slowed me down from running from him. And this is what he taught me. I chose you. Mm -hmm. See, I never chose God. He chose me. And Jesus went on and said, there's a spiritual birth like there's a natural birth. Well, you can't choose religion. Yeah. You're born into this. You're mm -hmm. born into the body of Christ. You're born into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. You're born into the family of God. You have nothing to do with it. That's why religion, to me, is one of the highest voices of Satan because you can go to church all your life, follow the creed of the church, follow the, what they call the confirmation of faith, their, their confession of faith, what they believe is the church's roadway to heaven. Mm -hmm. And when you die, you never met Jesus Christ, you never accepted him, you go to hell. And you were a very good person. You went to church all your life. I was an acolyte. I, I, I did everything the priest asked me to do, my father and I. I mean, I was with my dad every Saturday working around the church. My mother was the head of the Sunday school. My, I mean, my dad was. My mother taught to Sunday school. We did everything the priest asked our family to do, but we didn't know Jesus. And so when I finally heard the gospel, that you have to accept him, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, first to the Jew and then the Gentile, Romans 1.16, and something drew me, and, I, and I, I'm almost 18 years old. I, most of my life I went to church, and I didn't know Jesus Christ. I, I knew church. I knew being an acolyte. But then I said, Jesus come into my heart, and my nature changed. Mm -hmm. I went from dark to light, uh, from death to life. And something happened. I don't know how to explain it. It's a spiritual thing. So, but there's a change that takes place. Jesus said in John 3, there's a natural birth and there's a spiritual birth. Mm -hmm. and the only way, marvel not, that you must be born again. Right. You, and that, again, there are people get nervous of that, but all that means is born from above. In other words, a spiritual birth. In other words, I had a natural birth, and now there's a spiritual birth. Mm -hmm. Now, in that spiritual birth, in Titus, before I get there, I want to read this. Mm -hmm. When I accept Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, you gotta, you got to get a glimpse of this. Something happens in the realm of the Spirit more than my name's written in, a, in heaven, Book mm -hmm. of Life, and my sins were forgiven. I, you, got, you got to start renewing your mind to the Word of God. And we'll get over there. The renewal there is transforming out of the conformity of the world and start thinking like God does. That's the renewal. Mm -hmm. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, it says this. It says, uh, I'll give two scriptures and we'll go on because I don't want to stay here. 
for all the promises of God are yes or amen. In other words, they're all pure. Mm -hmm. It's our inheritance in God. Yeah. It's They were given to us through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So there's no respect of persons. We talked about that one Sunday. Mm -hmm. If you if you have a respect of person, like in other words, say, I'm not good enough to be born again, that's mm -hmm. respect of persons, then you can't have faith. Mm -hmm. Or that person doesn't deserve it because they did, 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 did. Mm -hmm. That's respect of persons. Mm -hmm. The Bible goes on and says, who are you to judge an, another mm -hmm. man's servant? Mm -hmm. In other words, whoever God calls, he calls. Mm -hmm. He chooses. You, yeah. don't, you don't choose yourself to walk in this. Mm -hmm. You're called into this. Mm -hmm. You're chosen this. And I finally have settled. Mm -hmm. When I was 35 years old and I had eight hours to live, I realized that I had to make a choice. And when I did, after the surgery, and I had pipe tubes sticking out of me and blood coming out and a tube, I had to carry the IVs and this box and all kinds of things sticking out of me because they didn't know exactly how to save my life. I think it was just really the, the leading of God that saved me. I heard this, you shall live and not die if you declare my word. And it says works there, but it actually consists of teaching the Word of God. And so I said, okay, Lord, I give in. I give in. And I was pastoring at that point. I had a church of a hundred and some people. It wasn't that I wasn't doing the work of God. I just didn't want to do it. And I had no desire to do it. I, I, I liked my life prior. I know it makes people like, make fun of me. I liked going to the bar. I liked playing pool. I liked running around with doing this and that. And uh, that's not what God wanted me to do. I had a job that could have lasted 30 years. It was a good job, a high-paying job, but God had a different choice for me. I didn't choose that. God chose me. That's the first thing. When I did accept the Lord and Jesus came in, it's more than just being forgiven, and it's more than just having your name written in the book of life. It says here, now we're established in Christ. The seed is Christ. If you go to Galatians 3.16, the seed is Christ. All right? So... In 1 John 3, 9, it says, I've been born of God, and his seed remains in me. What seed? The seed of Christ. Mm -hmm. If you go to 1 Corinthians 1, 24, it's and the wisdom Christ. of God and yeah. power of God. Yeah, okay. okay? Yeah. And so when I'm born again, God mm -hmm. puts in my spirit mm -hmm. no different respect to persons, the same wisdom mm -hmm. and the same power that was placed in Jesus Christ was placed in my spirit. There's no respect for a person. And in anybody else that calls in the name of the Lord. Anybody that said, Jesus, yeah. come into my heart, so, receive the same measure of wisdom. What mm -hmm. is that measure of wisdom for? It's to live your life mm -hmm. in Christ, not only in your natural life and your spiritual life. Matter of fact, it's so powerful, it said even in the next life, it'll consist us to contain us in what God called us to be, for ordained us and predestined. It's very powerful because it goes on. Right on, that you say, part, on that part, though. You keep saying that God only chooses, that we don't choose him. Right. That's that part that they bring out, predestination. But I love how we were also taught everybody was predestinated to God, right. but not everybody chooses. So I'm, it, the yeah, way see, you're saying see, that what, is... When they, what they miss on that is yeah. this. The favorite scripture that I heard when I first came out, I don't know if it's still popular because mm -hmm. I went deeper than this. Mm -hmm. John three sixteen. For yeah. God so loved the world that... Whoever re believes in him shall mm -hmm. not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. There again is the word all or whosoever. Mm -hmm. It means in the Greek, anybody. Mm -hmm. So our responsibility to this church, you're getting me way off the course again. But no, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. God set it up mm -hmm. that it's the responsibility of the church, mm -hmm. individual members, all of us, to go into the world mm -hmm. and to teach and preach. Mm -hmm. Matthew 28, Mark 16. There's two scriptures you look at. So what does that mean? It means that God has established his salvation for every single individual. Mm -hmm. In other words, when Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father after he offered the blood, salvation from that point mm -hmm. to eternity is for any person right. that will receive it. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. But you don't know about that gift till someone tells you about it. Mm -hmm. For example, I had an uncle who had $200 million dollars. Before he died, he divided that between 200 of his children. So we all got a million dollars. Well, he never told me. So I'm living in poverty. I'm living in, I'm living in the ghetto, barely getting along street, mumble alley, grumble alley. And so, so I go to the bank one day, and they said, why do you always look the way you're doing? I see you down there begging for a hamburger and some french fries. Well, we don't understand. You have a million dollars in the bank. And I said, do what? And so I didn't know. Someone gave it to me as a gift. I didn't know. So if you don't know, you don't know. 
So the point of this is so God choosing, did it for every person. So the person. choosing then is choosing to be the, the ambassador and the... Right. God chose all of us in a sense. Yeah. He predestinated all mankind mm-hmm. to live in his goodness, his mm-hmm. kindness, right. and his loving kindness. And so when... And your conscience was given to you by God to mm-hmm. show you those three things. Mm-hmm. His goodness, right. his kindness, and his lovingness. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing to me because you can look around... And see that if you really observe. Mm -hmm. But anyway, your conscience then hears the word of God, which is the voice of your spirit, your spirit. Mm -hmm. And your spirit then is drawn to that. Mm -hmm. The spirit of God will draw you to it. Why? Because the word and the spirit work together. Mm -hmm. Remember the woman with the issue of well? She heard about Jesus. She heard Mm -hmm. the word of God. Mm -hmm. She said within herself, Mm -hmm. when I touch his garment, I will be healed. Well, there was a hundred and some plus people touching him that day. But they didn't hear that message. Mm -hmm. She heard that message. So Mm -hmm. was she the only one chosen to be healed that day? No. So it was available to everyone. It was it was it was provided for everyone. But she stepped out in what she heard Mm -hmm. and said. And that's why renewing the mind and and that's why renewing the mind is very, very important here. You you Mm -hmm. get a key. Mm -hmm. I think one of the greatest weaknesses of the church today is an unrenewed mind. Mm We are born of the Spirit, but we pattern our life after the world. Mm-hmm. And the world will never receive Christ. The, real, the right. ma- natural man will never understand right. the Bible Word says of God. It's foolishness. Right. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. So, and mm-hmm. here, let me finish this. It says, After you were received in Christ, how mm-hmm. do I get in Christ? I, get, I ask Jesus to come in. He takes out of me that nature of sin or that spiritual separation. He puts in me his seed. A seed is, I'm grafted in or I'm adopted in. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the seed. Mm -hmm. And out of that seed, if you understand fruit, Mm -hmm. inside of that fruit is other seeds, even vegetables. Mm There's a seed in it. You can take a seed out of the first fruit you plant or Mm -hmm. vegetable. Because it's how all living things keep going. Right. So Jesus started. He was the Mm -hmm. first begotten. Mm -hmm. He was the first of his kind. He was the first resurrected. Mm-hmm. And then when we receive that, we receive a seed out of that, mm-hmm. and we're adopted into the seed. And in that seed is establishment of an anointing. Mm-hmm. The anointing is synonymous with Christ. Mm-hmm. Then the anointing is synonymous with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it goes on, who has sealed us. So in our spirit, after we're born again, except Jesus, he places within us a seed. Mm-hmm. Each one of us received the same seed. It's Christ. Mm-hmm. In that seed is the same measure of wisdom and power. Can it increase? Yes, that's mm-hmm. what we're talking about. We can increase God or magnify God in our life through the renewing of the mind, which you're talking about. Mm-hmm. But I'm just trying to set the foundation of this. Then we're sealed. Now, we're, what that means is we're marked. Mm-hmm. In the realm of the Spirit, the devil, the angels, Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Spirit, demonic spirits, uh, spiritual weakness, high places, principalities, powers, mights, rulers, darkness, world, all know that we're of God. That's why spiritual uh, uh, stirrings happens out there. But anyway, given the earnest of the Spirit in our spirit, what does that mean? He gives a measure, the same measure, of the Holy Spirit to each of us when we're born again. Now, I want to go to that. The other verse that confirms that is Ephesians, because on two or three scriptures, Actually. I just... Actually, 2 Corinthians 5.5. 5. I was going to go there yeah. next. Okay. Ephesians one yeah. thirteen. In whom all she trusted after you heard the word of truth, mm-hmm. the word of God. Yeah. Jesus said in John 17, my word is truth. Mm-hmm. In the gospel of your salvation, in whom also that you believed, you were sealed mm-hmm. with that Holy Spirit of promise. Yeah. Then you said 2 Corinthians 5.5, 5, which is true, which I should have went there first, was closer to me. In 5.5 5, it says, he that has wrought us in the same thing as God who has given us the earnest of his spirit. Mm-hmm. That earnest there means an allotment. It means a measure. Mm-hmm. Each one of us receives the same measure of the Holy Spirit in our spirit, just like Jesus did. Mm-hmm. When God breathed into Mary's womb and planted that word into her spirit, he had the same mm-hmm. wisdom and power in him. Because if you go to Luke chapter 2, the very first thing he grew in was what? Wisdom. Right. He grew in wisdom that gave him favor with God and man. Notice there that Jesus also had to grow in that wisdom and power by what? Renewing his mind with the word of God. Now, in Titus, though, I'm going fast because of time. In Titus 3, 5, I love this scripture. It says, not by works of righteousness which we have done. Mm-hmm. 
And that's why we get away from church creeds. We get away from religion. I don't choose it. I'm actually born into this thing. Mm -hmm. Amen? That we have done, but according to his mercy. Why? Why is it mercy there not grace? Because I did not deserve mm -hmm. the absolute forgiveness and redemption of what's offered to me through the blood of Jesus. For the things that I did, society, still, I still have a record. Mm -hmm. You could go down to any courthouse. I shouldn't tell people this. And they can pay probably some bucks. Last time I paid was, what, $95 or something? But each line costs. So here comes here comes my record. I said, come on now. And it showed all the good things that I did as a young man. And I will never be forgiven. My family still remembers. My relatives still remember. The people that I hurt still remember. The friends that I ran around with still remember. But in God, through his mercy, still loved me. And forgave me of everything I did. It's a powerful word there. Then once you come into his mercy, you can come into his grace, which is divine flow into the Holy Spirit. Well, that's not a subject for another day. But by the washing, listen to this, mm -hmm. the washing of regeneration, which is the same thing as being born again. Mm -hmm. Regeneration. You became a child. You're Like when I generated with you, we had a child. Mm -hmm. The generation of Matt and Brenna is Laura, Rebecca, Sarah, and Matthew. Mm -hmm. And now we have seven grandchildren and yep. who knows where it'll end mm -hmm. you know what i mean and maybe by the time we're 80 we'll have great grandchildren you know which we're getting i mean what, what's our granddaughter third or fourth grade i don't even know what grade she's in but anyway it goes on and it says and the renewing she probably killed me for that she hears me by the renewing of the holy ghost there's the mm -hmm. point i want to see see there that we received a measure mm -hmm. of the holy spirit inside of our spirit what happened is the Spirit of God came into our spirit. It's a spiritual operation. Colossians chapter 2 talk about this. It's a spiritual circumcision, mm -hmm. not made without hands. In other mm -hmm. words, the Spirit of God came in, mm -hmm. took my spirit, cut out or removed. I don't know how you want to say it. I like, I like he excised. Because if you think of yeah. natural circumcision, men know. Yeah. Thank God they do it when you're only in the hospital when you're just born. Because I hear it's very painful. And they cut that foreskin off, that mm -hmm. circumcision. Mm -hmm. Everything in the natural imitates the spiritual. So what happened in the spiritual realm? He cuts out, he removes that nature of sin. It's a circumcision. Mm -hmm. And when he does that, he renews your spirit the way he designed us mm -hmm. or breathed into Adam mm -hmm. in the very beginning. We go back to what he established in the garden. We go back to what Adam was mm -hmm. before he sinned. Right. It's an amazing thing. It's called redemption. He bought us back to bring mm -hmm. us back to the life that he wanted us to live in this earth and all the benefits that he mm -hmm. wanted us to live. And that's where the word of God comes in. That's why we must renew our mind. So we have this renewal that took place in our spirit or, or spiritual operation or this circumcision that took place deep down in our spirit in a moment of a second. Mm -hmm. I mean, as soon as you said, Jesus come into my heart, all this took place because it's mm -hmm. a spiritual thing. Right. It, it's like, boom, it, it, the twinkling of an eye will be in the presence of the Lord. It's the same thing that happened in the new birth. Now, that's what takes us to Romans chapter 12. This is the only other place that this is said in a verb action or a noun or the subject of it. I need to study up on that because I get this a little confused. And so listen what it says. So the God part was instant, but the human part takes time. And, and you just said it. You took the words out of my mouth, which is good. God had his part. Mm -hmm. His part was he came as a man. Mm -hmm. He took on our sin. He died and went to hell where we should have went. Yeah. Third morning, he was born up, raised up by the Spirit, mm -hmm. Romans 6, 4, Romans 8, 11. He then picked up the keys of hell and death. He already has the blood. He enters before the Father God. This is all in Hebrews 9. Mm -hmm. He offers that blood and the keys of hell and death mm -hmm. to the Father, God the Father. He accepts it, and it says he did it for an eternal redemption. Mm -hmm. He bought us our eternal right. redemption. Now, what we do then is we receive that as a gift. He done mm -hmm. it all for us. There's nothing you have to do. But according to his mercy, mm -hmm. he saved me. Yeah. So what that means is I hear the message. I mm -hmm. hear the word of God. The word of God brings faith. Mm -hmm. Then I believe in my heart, this is Romans 10, verse 8 through 10, the word of, not, the word of faith is nigh me in my mouth. Because why? First so this I heard, is where your story comes. The, mm -hmm. the rich person puts the money in the bank, 
and you didn't know about it, but right. now when I'm born again, I know what's in, in the bank for me, and right. I go and make a withdrawal. Right, and then I start living like high on the hog. I mean, instead of so living in ghetto land and barely get along so, in Grumble Alley, I'm living pretty so good. So spiritually, God has made that potential for me, and I can go and make right, a, a demand on that, right, a because withdrawal. If you, yeah. if you study Luke 4, 18, what does it say? Mm -hmm. He preaches the gospel to the what? Poor. Mm -hmm. Not natural poor. That does consist in it. But again, we're so natural-minded that that's what we say. No, spiritually poor. Why was I spiritually poor? I was separated from God. I, I didn't even know God. I was on my way to hell. Uh, there's two roads. There's the broad and wide road, and there's a narrow straight mm -hmm. road. And very few choose it. Mm -hmm. All right? But anyway, in, in Romans chapter 12, it says, be conformed to, do not be conformed to this road, which is a command. Mm -hmm. The word conform there means pattern your life after the world. Okay. When do they start that? At age four now. They put you in pre-kid and garden, and they start programming you for this world. And now, as we're finding out through the pandemic, boy, were they programming our kids. A lot of us didn't like what they were programming our kids, mm -hmm. this, this racial divide. We're Americans. Even in God, he never sees flesh. That's colorblind. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah. And, and see, we don't even know mm -hmm. what the Bible says. If you mm -hmm. don't read it, you won't know what it says. Twice it talks about that when God sees us, he sees mm -hmm. us through the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So in God, there is no male and female. Right. In God, there is no black and white. There is no culture. God looks at us through the Spirit man. It, and that's why... Uh, that thing in Corinthians gets off a little bit, and I don't want to touch it today. But we got to begin to see ourselves as God sees us. God sees us through the Spirit. We now need to begin to see Him through the Spirit, mm -hmm. because God is a Spirit. Mm -hmm. John four twenty. Uh, so how do I get the mind of Christ? Okay. Now, when I'm born again, all this is placed within me. I have the mm -hmm. power of God in me. Mm -hmm. I have the wisdom of God in me, and it's sealed. Mm -hmm. Nobody can break that sealment. Jesus said, if you're in the hand of the Father, nobody can pluck you out. Mm -hmm. The only way, according to Hebrews chapter 10, and I think it's Hebrews chapter 6, is you have to break that mm -hmm. seal. You got to deny there was never a Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You have to deny that you were never born again. You have to deny. But there's, there's a list of things before you can absolutely deny it mm -hmm. that there's a list that you have to walk in in the yeah. realm of the Spirit before you can deny that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we say things when we're young and in the flesh, immature in Christ, and we say things which is just a child says. We, even grandchildren now, they say things, you laugh because it's so ridiculous, but it's a little child's mind. And we have done that even in the realm of the Spirit. No matter how old we are in the, mm -hmm. in the natural, we say things young as a spirit. So here it is. We have this power and this wisdom called Christ sealed into us. You have to picture this. Mm -hmm. And it's stored into our spirit. Second Peter 1, 3, and 4 says we have been partakers mm -hmm. of this divine nature, and it's called Christ. Mm -hmm. And then it goes, how do I partake of it? Through the exceeding precious promises of God's word, I can escape mm -hmm or I can leave, or I can have victory over anything that dominated me mm -hmm. that I did not want to dominate me, all right? That's a pretty powerful thought. So how do I do that? God has given us the responsibility to take his word and start to feed on it. Mm -hmm. And what that begins to do is begins to renew your mind to God slowly. Because what it begins to do is begins to, you begin to understand slowly what God has done inside of you in that moment of a second. And you begin to understand it through the eyes of the Word of God. It's the only way you can renew your mind. You can't renew it by works. You can't renew it by being good. You can't renew it by giving your money to God. You can't buy God. You can't, you can't do good works to please God. He's designed it only one way to walk with Him, and that's the renewing of your mind. Which and is... Which is. Mm -hmm the opposite of what's going on in our society. They're renewing our minds, but they are inserting thoughts yeah. that create realities because they want us to all think alike and, and be alike. And, and see, and, that's what I said. What, yeah. How they begin to program is, is when you're yeah. four years old now. They bring you in and they begin to teach you how to, how to pattern your life to live in the natural right. world. 
Right. And when we grew up, it was how to do finances, it was how to act towards each other, how to prepare for a job, mm -hmm. how to prepare to be something in society. I mean, I remember in first and second grade, I still have that pamphlet, my mom saved it. Mm -hmm. You take a picture of yourself and you right. draw, we all look like stick men. Right. And well, there's a few drawers, I guess, and you know, and you put your teeth and your hands and all that. And then they ask you, what would you like to be when you grow up? And mm -hmm. the boys pick Superman or Fireman or Policeman. You know, something good at that year because it's the innocence. We're in innocence. We're not yet full of <laughs> full, full of sin at, you know, seven, eight years, six, seven, eight years old. And so the girls, that, in our generation. I was going to say not I anymore. <laughs> and not anymore, but they would grow the white picket fence and being a mom mm -hmm. and, you know, being a nurse, being a teacher, you know what I mean? And so and the they three begin... things that they were allowed to be as girls. <laughs> right back then, now yeah, yeah. hats off. Now I mean, yeah, right. you know, no cuffs now. I laugh. You know. I I, some, I I I chuckle when women think they have it so awful now because I'm like, look how far we've come. Yeah, very you far. Know? Very really? far. Yeah. You know, some of them yeah. wear the pants of the house now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, uh, God's designed it one way and one way only, and that's why I said one of the greatest needs in the church mm -hmm. is renewed. So you see that word. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted to read that to you over in Titus. Uh, the word was renewal, okay? Yeah. And it's very interesting because I'm going to read, uh, show you the word in the Greek because uh, it's just more impressive, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, in the Greek, the word renewal, if I ever find a place in the Word of God, it says in 3 5 um, that same word, um, Anakinosios, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's an interesting word because it means to be renewed. <laughs> what does that mean? And, and then what does that mean? Okay, well, I already shared that with you. When you ask Jesus Christ to come No, in what your does heart, that mean? Just what does that mean? How do you get renewed? Is your this spirit, is this only a spiritual thing? Yes. Okay. At this point, when okay. you accept Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. your nature changes. Okay. He takes you back to what he established mm -hmm. you were. Adam in Adam. Mm -hmm. That's what Adam was. He's the federal head of all mankind. Mm -hmm. When he formed Adam by his hands, which represents his power, when he formed Adam, he breathed into him a spirit, Panuma, and in mm -hmm. that spirit was the DNA of God and your yeah. own DNA. Okay. When he they sinned, mm -hmm. that part of God DNA left. Mm -hmm. That's where the word spiritual separation or spiritual death came from. We were spiritually separated from God. And God showed it to us in the natural by throwing them out of the garden. Mm -hmm. They were kicked out of the garden, and Adam and Eve had to, there were certain things pronounced to them through the spirit mm -hmm. that now their life would be as in the natural. And that's that does not stop till you're born of the spirit. And that's interesting because when you were going on to say about renewing our mind, and mm -hmm. um, there are there is a spiritual realm, and it's even, it has eyes. Mm -hmm. It has understanding. They weren't right. blind. Right. They weren't physically, naturally blind. But right. they are spiritually separated from God. Mm -hmm. And they are blinded right. spiritually. Right. And, in sec and in Corinthians, it says that the devil comes, the enemy comes, mm -hmm. to blind us. Right. So what does he try to do? He separates the word of God and the understanding of it mm -hmm. from us, the revelation of it from us. Why? So that we cannot be renewed mm -hmm. in the spirit of our mind. Right. We cannot be renewed in our soul. Right. Even though we could be sealed, mm -hmm. we don't walk it out. Okay. So now, notice that's there. where our defeat is. Uh -huh. That's where we live all day, every right. day. Right. Because we don't know. Right. And because we listen to people's news and people's experiences and people's words, and we don't even have a clue. Right. Because Hosea 6 mm -hmm. 4, I think, right. it says, My people perish because of mm -hmm. lack of knowledge or ignorance. Right. And then it carries that over. In the New Testament, there's two things we're not to be ignorant of. Right. One is Satan's noose, his mind, mm -hmm. right. how he operates, his M.O., and that's actually brought out in Ephesians 6. Mm -hmm. It literally means his M.O., yeah. Yeah. his motor, motor aisle, or door, Modus whatever. of operandus. Thank you. Yeah. And then in uh, Second, uh, mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 14, we're not to be ignorant of the things pertaining to belonging to the influence of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, without renewing your mind, you're ignorant of both of those. Mm -hmm. We've blamed God. We've actually told God he's Satan a lot of times. That he's the killer, he's the stiller, he's he's the murderer, right. Right. he's the liar. I mean, mm -hmm. it's amazing what we've done. Right. Why? Because in for, uh, in Romans twelve, mm -hmm. let's just go through it. Be not conformed. That means what? To pattern in your life. Right. To to live your life after what? To this world. Who's the God of this world? There's 
where a lot of people miss but that's not talking about but that's not talking about dress and look so very odd that everybody says wow look at you you're different right and, and that, that doesn't mean and that's what the know? church did right. in religion right. uh they gave you uniforms they right. made you wear certain things right so that you stood out, that you, you were even, different than the and world. And you even patterned your life in such a way that you were different. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I can't play baseball okay. on Sunday because I get you. I see where you're there's right. a rule about that. Right. Because <laughs> the first minister I yeah. served as assistant pastor only mm -hmm. one season, yeah. about four years, I think it was. Yeah. And he wore a robe. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and my priest, we mm -hmm. used to call him father, yeah. priest wore a robe. And that weirded me out because I came out of that, and I don't mm. want to go back into that. So I asked him one day. We, we did right. a lot together. He was training me for mm. ministry. Mm. And he wasn't born of the Spirit. He wasn't even a Christian. He did a lot of social things. He was the mm. ambulance driver. or He hooked up with the ambulance people and the mm. fire company. And right. I mean, anything socially went down, he was involved with mm. it. And he couldn't understand me. And I tried to get him to see the Word of God that you have to accept Jesus Christ. But we didn't get anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so... I asked him one day, well, why do you wear a robe? Mm -hmm. And he said, so I separate myself from the people. Mm -hmm. And he, he didn't realize whether he, he showed me why I was different. He said, I believe that if I was driving down a road and popped a tire, I wouldn't even have to ask you. You would jump out, open my trunk, and change my tire for me. Mm -hmm. How does all people know who you are? By your love. And mm -hmm. that is the way God wants you to pattern by the word of God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he patterned his after the world. He wanted to look different mm -hmm. than everybody else in the church. He just didn't want to wear a suit or, I was going to say a dress, but he didn't want to wear a suit or it looked like just a churchgoer. Mm -hmm. And so he literally wore a robe and he said, that separates me mm -hmm. from others because I show them that I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I, I, and that's never left me. I just thought that was amazing mm -hmm. because wearing a clothing didn't mean nothing you know what I'm saying? Didn't, mm. i mean i've seen people in a robe do the same thing that people without a robe did and it was mm. amazing to me but anyway it says here the world well we have to digest this whole verse mm. the world is the world system it's not the right. earth mm -hmm. the earth belongs to god but the dominion of the earth belonged to adam mm -hmm. when he sinned adam and eve both mm -hmm. they were one mm -hmm. when they sinned it was given over to Satan. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 4, 4, he became the God of this world. He became the prince right. of the air. He mm -hmm. became the ruler over this world order, not mm -hmm. the earth, because the silver, the gold, the cattle, if you study the word of God, mm -hmm. and the fullness of it was given to the church, was right. given to God's people to, mm -hmm. to, to supply our need mm -hmm. here. I get a kick out of this oil thing, this global warming thing. They're fighting God so bad, it's... Who do you think put the stuff into the earth? God did. For why? So we can live comfortable, so we can live good, you know? But anyway, and then how we're going to go out with Revelation at the end telling us how we're going to go out. But the devil came up with his own way. And I think we have, what, seven years left or something before we totally no, died? No. Boomed off this earth? No, what, it's down less than that. Less than that? Yeah. Oh, oh, my. And so anyway, man's smarter than God, I guess. But anyway, I want you to see here, do not be conformed to this world order. So what does that mean? It means that Satan, his tree of... His knowledge, mm -hmm. if you go back to the beginning, in the garden was put two trees. Mm -hmm. There was hundreds of trees. All looked good. It was for food. Mm -hmm. So I presume it was a lot of fruit trees. And, and like plums and apples. I don't know. Whatever I wasn't, they grow in the Middle East. Yeah, whatever they grow over there, right? Yeah. And so um, there was also a tree of good and evil. Mm -hmm. The trees represented knowledge. It represented nature. Mm -hmm. So the tree of life represented the nature of God. And the fruit thereof was the same thing we're talking about, living from the word of God, living mm -hmm. off of God's spirit, or however you want to say it, his wisdom and power mm -hmm. to enforce. That's the mm -hmm. tree of life. In Revelation, that tree shows up again in heaven, and we can partake of its fruit. I thought that's kind of interesting. The, gar the tree of good and e the knowledge of good and evil was, if you study it out, is the lust of your mind, mm -hmm or the desire of your mind, the desire or the lust of your flesh, mm -hmm. and the pride of life. Yeah. The pride of life is no more than gaining materialistic world. Uh, you want a house, you want a cabin, you want a boat, you want an airplane. I mean, that's the pride of life, what you're working for, what you're, you're, you're ministering. And that's basic, if you think about the world order we live in, mm -hmm that you'll find that you fit in one of those three areas of the knowledge 
that this world order is built around. Either desire of your flesh, and that's where I zoomed in. If it felt good, I did it. Mm -hmm. uh, desire of the mind. I, and remember, it's good and evil. Mm -hmm. You can do with the desire of your mind, do great things. Mm -hmm. Medicines, building buildings, uh, inventing things. I mean, it's amazing what you can do in that knowledge of good and evil. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's the knowledge then. That's why God said to Adam and Eve, I have to kick you out. Because if you partake of the tree of life, you will be eternally in that state. I will not be able to redeem you. Mm -hmm. So they, if you remember, they put cherubims there and a great sword that turned or something mm -hmm. to protect till that tree was taken out or whatever happened. Mm -hmm. And so the flood came in Genesis 6, and I guess the whole place changed. But it's interesting to see that because so if we're patterned after the world, how do we now pattern ourselves after the tree of life or pattern after God? With our minds. With our minds. And that's where we get the word of God. That's why this book mm -hmm. is so important. So God can speak to us through his word. Mm -hmm. He can influence us by his grace. All right. So, and then our minds start to think like God thinks. And then we start to pattern our life after what Right. You, tr you begin to transform right. out right. of this world. And that's why you don't have to do it by dress. Mm -hmm like with long hair, short hair, or hats, mm -hmm. or robes, mm -hmm. or clothing. That's mm -hmm. not what God's looking for. He's looking for those that will worship him in spirit and truth. And that's in John 4. And so that's what he wants about. So that same word renewal, mm -hmm. or being renewed, in Titus, mm -hmm. is now in this verse. What verse? It's in Romans 12, chapter 2. Mm -hmm. And uh, right here, it's Anna Kanose which is the same word. If you look it down here in, in the cheat notes, it says renewal, the same thing. So why would God put the same word renewal when you're born of the Spirit? Why aren't you totally renewed then when you're born of the Spirit? Right. Mm -hmm. So you got to go back and, and, and begin to parse this. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I'm born again, it's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people don't understand, even some scholars, some theologians. They believe we're just a soul and a body, mm -hmm. but we're more than that. First Thessalonians 5.23 says we're a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. So when I'm born again, when I accept Jesus Christ, it's a spiritual change. It's my spirit that is only dealt with. Mm -hmm. In other words, I say it like this. When I accepted Jesus, I was still, I had the same, same color hair, had the same color eyes. Mm -hmm. I had the same kind of problems. Mm -hmm. I thought the same. <laughs> And, and but what happened was a nature change. Mm -hmm. I became a new creature in Christ. Second Corinthians five seventeen. But you had to you had to renew yourself to that change. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you would still be walking out your old stuff. Right, and that's where I'm getting at. So and you we, struggled in that. I struggled in it a lot of times because my mm -hmm. flesh. I opened myself up to mm -hmm. to a, a diet of narcotics. For example, I was 14, we lived in the, in the, in the farm country, mm -hmm. and it was either dairy or mushrooms. Not uh, mushrooms you get high on, but the creams, the deluxe. And so at 14, you were allowed to sign out in our area out of school. So my bus driver would pick me up at my house. We lived about three miles out of town. And she would say, where would you like to go today, Matthew? And I would say, I want to go to Pete's. Pete's was a pool hall where we mm -hmm. hung out. So she would drop me off at the railroad track <laughs> before she turned down to go to the school, and I would walk down the track. It almost became a joke. Even the principal picked me up one day and said, where would you like to go, Matthew? <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, my mom and dad, I would sign a little card and s pretending I was my mother. I would practice her handwriting and, and get a piece of paper and put it over and copy it. I was, I was something. But anyway... I, my f parents finally get a phone call because they're mm -hmm. both working, and finally it caught up to me. They said, Mr. and Mrs. Farkas. Somebody named a truant officer showed up, right? Right, <laughs> and we would like your son to be signed out of school mm -hmm. or we're going to start fining you. <laughs> so I signed out and I started to work. I worked just to get stoned, and, and, and that's a fact. If I would mm -hmm. have the money I had today. We have to close out on this story. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, what I want to end with was... In Romans 12, the word renewal mm -hmm. means this. Mm -hmm. What God put inside of you, what changed in that moment was a God thing. Mm -hmm. Now God puts it back on us to renew our mind. The same renewal that took place in my spirit can now begin to take place in my soul and my body. Mm 
-hmm. In other words, that same power that changed me, mm -hmm. that gave me the power mm -hmm. that changed my nature can begin to change my thinking, which will begin to change the way that I live my life. For example, I... So my thinking and my speaking, this is what... I, are, we, are what make possible... Next week we can actually get into Impossibles, that. impossibles happen. Right. That's where right. we get in. I just wanted to lay the foundation date. Right. And I'll give one example in close. Mm -hmm. I was struggling even after I was saved, even mm -hmm. in the ministry, I was struggling with, mm -hmm. with the flesh that I opened myself what up to. What you had patterned your life. That I patterned my life after mm -hmm. I conformed to. Mm -hmm. And I was reading over there in Colossians, and it said this, through that power that I was born again with, mm -hmm. delivered me mm -hmm. from all the power of darkness. Mm -hmm. So a light turned on. And this is how God does it. He'll mm -hmm. renew your mind. Yeah. Inside my spirit, because I dropped that seed in, that mm -hmm. verse, the yeah. Spirit of God said to me, he renewed my mind mm -hmm. by putting the Word of God in me. He said, put whatever you need there. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I was struggling with cigarettes really bad. And I'm not saying cigarettes are bad. I'm just saying for what my position in the church and the people I was serving, cigarettes was kind of a no-no, okay, mm -hmm. for that, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I was embarrassed. I would buy a pack, I'd smoke three or four, get guilty, throw it in a trash. I'd go a week or two and buy another pack, smoke three or four. I went up and down, up and down, up go and on. down. And so anyway, mm -hmm. I started reading that. I started mm -hmm. to put there, through the power of the resurrection, through the mm -hmm. new birth, what God did in my spirit in yeah. that moment, I'm mm -hmm. delivered from the power of nicotine. Mm -hmm. And it was like, now you have to understand, this was a revelation. It was an illumination of revelation. You just can't take someone else's testimony right. and say, well, it worked for Matt, it worked for me. Inside my spirit, I saw that mm -hmm. I never smoked another cigarette, it, it, unless I choose because to. Because it made something that was impossible become possible. Right. And that's what the Word of God, when it becomes Absolutely. revelation, very good. Very when it good. becomes a revelation out of, and, and you right. see it in the spiritual Be understanding of it, mm -hmm. it takes that that understanding to help right. you. Because I took the Word of God so, and I spoke it, and that power of that Word freed me. All right. From that so we addiction. can have we can have right. the mind of Christ. We have the anointing, the wisdom and power of God on the inside of us. It sealed us. Right. But we can then walk out our life with that mind of Christ by renewing our minds in His Word, and, and that's what and we'll that can be week. our victory. Yeah, we'll we'll share yeah. that yeah. because that's I just laid the foundation of what happened. Yeah. Now we need to learn how to renew ourselves. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so we thank you for tuning in, and we do have services every Sunday, 10 a.m., 582 Rockingham Road, mm -hmm. Living Hope Fellowship. Uh, we live stream around 1030, and then we also have a Bible study on Tuesdays from 6 to 7 at the same address. Yeah. So I want to just share, thank uh, Fact TV for the opportunity to share our message, and also check out the other sites on Fact TV. You might like others than ours. Continue to watch us, though, but check the other sites out. And we want to say thank you for Fact TV. And God bless.